Hi nurses, this video is to help you prepare for the OET nursing speaking test. I'm going to explain how to approach a speaking role play, make the most of your preparation time, demonstrate the assessment criteria in your speaking, practice the role play and learn from each role play you complete. Ready? Let's go. The nursing speaking test requires you to role play two different situations with an interlocutor. You will always take the role of the nurse in the conversation, while the interlocutor will take the role of your patient or a family member of the patient. For example, their husband or wife, adult son or daughter, or the parent of a young patient. The two role play situations will be quite different to allow you to demonstrate a range of English expressions and functions, which are typical for healthcare conversations including reassuring, explaining, persuading and asking questions. The interlocutor as the patient or family member might also have an emotional response to their health condition, such as anxiety, frustration or sadness, which are all common emotions nurses deal with every day, and allow you to demonstrate your empathy and ability to manage the patient to make the right choices and decisions for their health. Everything that you learn while preparing for OET speaking will be immediately useful to you when starting your new healthcare role in an English speaking environment and give you the confidence to tackle any situation, from giving bad news to explaining the steps of a healthcare treatment. By demonstrating flexible, accurate English and responding appropriately to the interlocutor, you will demonstrate to the assessor and regulators that you have the language required for a B grade or higher. Before each role play, you have three minutes to prepare for the conversation using the role card. Remember that you can ask the interlocutor questions during the preparation time. If there is a word you don't know the meaning of or how to pronounce, you can ask this during the preparation time and if the interlocutor knows the answer, they can tell you. Let's look at a nursing role card in more detail. There are three sections to the card, the setting, the background information and the list of tasks. Here are my recommendations about what you should do during your preparation time. Notice the setting of the role play. Here it is a community health centre. This tells me that the situation is not urgent and there's a good chance that I will have met this patient before to discuss some routine health condition. Look through the background information to find out some details about your patient, for example their age and any adjectives which describe how they're feeling. Here I can see my patient is 18 years old and I have the adjective worried. This information is useful to think about how I am going to start the role play. Younger patients often have had less experience in healthcare settings and may be feeling unsure of what is going to happen during the conversation. This patient's age and the fact that they are worried tell me I want to sound kind by choosing language which will reassure them to start the role play. Check the healthcare condition the role play will be about from the background information as well as any useful details which might relate to how the patient will respond to questions and options I suggest during the conversation. I can see that this patient is experiencing emotion-related panic attacks, which are related to an examination in their last year of high school, and that they have come to me for advice on how to manage them. This tells me that the situation is very time critical in that the patient needs support to enable them to function to their usual high standard in an exam which is important to them. I need to demonstrate that I am taking their concerns seriously and have some easy strategies to help them. Read the tasks to check what needs to be discussed in the conversation. The verbs starting each task are really important in helping me to understand what I will say and how I will say it. Find out means to ask the patient for details about their panic attacks. Explore means to talk with the patient about possible triggers for the panic attacks. Give reasons means to give the patient some explanation for why they have the symptoms. Reassure means to make the patient feel better about the panic attacks and giving them some recommendations for self-care. Advise means to suggest the patient attends the community health centre. Lastly, run through this checklist. Is there anything unexpected to the patient in what I'm going to tell them? In this case, the answer is no. The tone of the tasks is positive. 
Is there any medical language on the roll card I need to avoid because they won't understand it? Again, in this case, the answer is no, because all of the language is suitable for a lay person. Which tasks do I need to spend most time on? From looking at the tasks again, I know I want to allow plenty of time for tasks four and five. Task two could also need a bit of time to encourage the patient to share their ideas and to respond appropriately to them. I should aim to move through tasks one and three fairly quickly. The OET speaking test is unique in that it simulates the real life conversations you have with your patients as a nurse. It's important to remember this once the role play starts because it will help you to communicate naturally and effectively with the interlocutor as your patient. Here are a few tips to speaking clearly and demonstrating the assessment criteria. Get the role play off to a good start. You are expected to start the conversation as you would in real life. Make use of the information you picked out in the preparation time to start the role play appropriately for this situation. I know this patient is feeling worried and I want them to explain the situation in their own words. So I choose to start, Hello, my name's Rebecca, one of the nurses here. I don't think we've met before. Can you tell me your name? And after the patient replies, What can I do for you today? This isn't the only option for starting the role play. I could be more direct and say after checking their name, I understand you've been having panic attacks. Can you tell me about those? My feeling is that this patient will open up more if I use a simple open question without any mention of my knowledge of their medical background. Take time to listen to the patient and respond to what they tell you. The roll card gives you a lot of information about the conversation, but you cannot know exactly what the patient will say in reply to your suggestions and advice, so make sure you are fully listening to what they tell you. Don't use this time to think about what you are going to say next, or you could miss something important. For example, the patient might tell you details about their sleep, that they live next to noisy neighbours, and that their room is very hot. Show you have listened by commenting on what they have just said and offering a suggestion. It must be hard to sleep when the room is not quiet or the right temperature. Have you tried talking to your neighbours about the noise? Be authentic in your role as a nurse. Sometimes you will need to be firm and tell the patient that what they are asking is not good health advice, or at other times you will need to clearly explain a process the patient is unfamiliar with. Do what you need to and make sure you match the tone of your voice to what you are saying. In this task, you need to provide a lot of reassurance. To do this, make your voice sound warm, use kind vocabulary choices and don't speak too fast. A lot of high school students experience panic attacks before end of year exams. The main thing to know is that they can be managed and I can give you some strategies to do this. How does that sound? Remember that this situation is new to your patient. Many people are fortunate to have good health for most of their lives and on the occasions that they do need to seek medical support, they feel vulnerable and anxious because they do not know why they are feeling this way or how the problem might be resolved. Although you might have talked about panic attacks many times before, this patient is clearly worried about why they are experiencing them. Try to put yourself in the patient's shoes and think about what you would want to know about the condition if this was the first time you were discussing it. There are a number of ways you can practice the role play with a family member, a friend or a colleague. It's important that you only look at the nursing card before you practice so that you are only getting the same amount of information that you do in the test. If you print off the roll cards, tear or fold the page in half so you only have your card, or if you are looking at the task online, change the size of the card so you can only see your part. Ask your patient to play their role fairly. If the task says they are worried, they should use language to show this. If it says they are frustrated, then similarly, they should use language to show this. OET role plays will never use extreme emotions like anger or tears, but it will help you prepare if you feel that slight pressure which comes from facing a patient who is feeling negative and trying to help them. Record the conversation on your phone so you can listen back to yourself afterwards. You can also use your phone as a timer to alert you when five minutes is complete. 
If you turn your phone face down in front of you, it will still be able to record while you will not be tempted to keep checking how much time is left, which is something you cannot do in the test. At the end of the role play, ask the friend or colleague who took the role of the patient how they felt during and after the conversation. Did they feel informed and supported during the conversation? Or was anything confusing, leaving them uncertain and with questions at the end? Consider this feedback and how you can improve on this for next time. Once you've at official OET and search the OET blog available on our website.